Through this video, you will learn how to create production quality 3D models in Blender. But what does production quality models even mean? For me, that means film ready, game ready, high quality texture, both performance and look, and you should be also able to sell them. So let's get started. So I searched on Google for a reference of the God of War Leviathan Axe and I found this image as a reference. And I also collected some photos and renders from different angles and perspectives to have a better idea of it. Then in Blender I added an image from the side view as a reference and then in the rotation I set everything to zero except I set the axe rotation to 90 degrees. Then if you look at the object properties of the image, uh, you can see here opacity, just check that and then I decrease the opacity a little bit. Then for the handle I started with a circle and in edit mode I started extruding the edges to block out the basic shape of the axe handle. Now add in a cube in the center of the axe head and start by blocking out the basic shape of the axe head. But before you start to block out, apply the cube scale and add in a loop cut in the middle. Then delete its one side. Then add a mirror modifier and set the axis to y axis. Then from the front view start extruding the shape of the axe and move the vertex accordingly as the shape goes. I am modeling this axe as low poly as I can because after some time we are going to transfer the details of a 1 million polygon axe to this low poly axe. Uh, wonder how? Well, you should stay tuned for that. And now for the spikes, add in a loop cut in the middle and select the top faces and extrude it and add some loop cuts to give it a curve shape. Then I selected the bottom face and extruded as same as the rest. So right now our axe handle is totally round and axe handle are not used to be very round. Uh, they are used to be elliptical for perfect grip in our hands. So let's squash it a bit on the y axis and apply the scale. Now in edit mode let's fill the top and bottom part of the handles. So select the border edges and then search for grid fill and apply. Our axe head looks very thick right now so let's taper it down. So in edit mode select all the front facing faces. Also make sure to turn clipping on in mirror modifier. Now click on this icon for proportional editing also known as soft selection and set the fall off to smooth and check only connected. Now move the selected faces to y axis and scroll for much better control over the curvature and same for the back side and same for the extensions too. Now it's time for the leather and straps. So select the portion of the handle where there will be our leather and then press shift D to copy and then press P and select selection. Now it is a separate object. Now add in a solidify modifier to it and increase the thickness a little bit. And now for the straps which are wound around, uh, I will use a bezier circle. Then in properties increase the extrude and bevel depth value to make it look like strap. Then in edit mode adjust the vertices and handles to give it a perfect shape you want. Then keep on duplicating to complete the whole handle. I'd like to add my own variation to anything that I model or recreate 
at least it gives a feeling of importance to me which encourages me to make even more stuff like this if you have your own signature style tell me in the comments i am really excited to know about that for my convenience i made the whole strap a single object and to combine all of them the shortcut is control j if you want to improve the shape further you can convert it to mesh and then tweak the shape and also if you think that they are quite high poly you can add a decimate modifier to it and decrease the ratio then i refined the shape of the pommel a little bit by adding some edge loops and some extruding Then I duplicated the axe head and the handle and moved them to a separate collection called low poly and moved these two in the high poly collection. Now with the high poly version let's start some sculpting but make sure to apply scale for both of them. So let's start with the handle so I will add in a multi resolution modifier and subdivide it 5 times. And don't worry for performance issue because you can always change the iteration level. Now I have turned on Y axis symmetry for now and I am using the inflate brush and hovering it around the corner of the axe head. Now I am using the clay strip brush to add cool subtle wood details all over the handle. Well I recommend using a paint tablet here because you get much more flexibility than mouse. I know that many of us can't afford everything but I think that it's worth the price. You will get way better results with paint tablet and also it increases the speed of your workflow. And not to mess up with the pommel, I use the crease brush to create a border around the pommel. Then after that I found this image of this ornamental design which I made softer in Photoshop. And don't worry you will get the link in the description. Then with the basic draw brush selected, go to texture and then in the texture open your image. And then set the stroke to anchored. Then if you drag on the handle you can see that the pattern is appearing. Now with the mask brush which you can access by pressing M, draw a rough shape of the dragon. By holding control you can erase the mask. Now I will mask the whole handle except our pattern. Then go to mesh filter and set that to inflate and then drag it to the left. Now press all time to clear the mask and to avoid the hard edge I will use the smooth brush to smoothen the edges. And now I will keep on refining it. Now it's time for the X set so I applied the mirror modifier and added a multi resolution of 5 iterations and added the same ornamental designs to the X head. Then using the flat brush I flattened the pattern. With the blob brush set to subtract I created holes. And with the elastic deform brush I avoided clipping. And then with the crease brush I added some carvings. Then with the crease brush go to stroke and select line. Now I will create the whole pattern with this. Also if you hold down alt you will get a perfect straight line. This may look very simple when watching this tutorial but trust me it is way harder to get the original shape uh, at least in the first attempt 
because uh, this is the fourth time I am making this axe at least for this tutorial. Now with the scrape brush I will scrape the edges of the axe. Cool our axe is almost done. So now we need to transfer the detail of the high poly axe to our low poly axe. And a very simple way to do that is that you can watch this video because otherwise the video will be very longer than expected. And it is not compulsory to transfer detail but because I need to make the axe both game ready and film ready, I have to do that. And before doing anything, remember to convert the straps from curve to mesh. But before texturing, uh, always remember to UV unwrap your object and which I covered in that video. So now it's time for texturing in Substance Painter. For that I exported the low poly axe with straps and also for baking I exported each cage separately which you will know by watching that video. So I baked all the normal and the mesh maps and now let's add in our iron raw material to the axe head. Now I will add in a new paint layer and paint some chipping on the axe. Now I will use the metal edge wear generator and dirt generator to add some cool effects. Now for the handle I will use simple wood material which I found on Polyhaven. And I added a metal edge wear here too. Then I stamped a brass material on this logo. Then the leather for leather and dirt for the strap. Then back in Blender if you want to import your textures, uh, select your principal BSDF and turn on the node wrangler add-on and press ctrl shift t and then select all the pbr textures and boom there you go then i created a simple forest scene on my own and placed the axe on the stump uh, which look kind of cool and then i rendered the whole animation with 400 samples and i think it took almost 10 hours to render that and that's pretty much it and if you are wondering how I rendered such huge animation then you can watch this video. Have a nice day.